uh, Commission had some deep concerns about Brotherhood. Their disclosure, contributions made, and failure to itemize receipts, untimely deposits of receipts, record keeping, in other words, they could not provide the documentation of the union donations from the members, individual members, to the PAC. They're not the only one. SCIU is also on there, and many others. When you talk about the Supreme Court unaffidavit back decision, also authorized the unions to lie in contracts. I found this notation from the Communication Workers of America. I'm going to stop right there for a moment, just give you my credentials. I'm a Marine veteran. I was both a union member for over 15 years. I was in management in over 15 years. I worked for the Teamsters. I worked for the Communications of Workers, Workers of America. I can't talk a lot about the Teamsters, but I know they were responsible for my military career during the Vietnam War. You see, they don't always tell you or provide a new employee with a contract. They don't explain that you need to get a withdrawal card from the Teamsters Union when you leave the job. Well, I was a summer hire. Join the union, pay the dues, and at the end of the summer, they said goodbye, I said goodbye. They didn't tell me I needed to fill out a card, so I did, so I didn't. Next summer, after college, I come back, worked about two weeks, and somebody complained because I didn't get a withdrawal card. So I was fired. Therefore, I didn't have the money for the next year, next semester. And without money to go to college during those years, you couldn't get a student deferment. Another story. Okay. Let's move to the CWA. Under the Beck exception, they make it very difficult. We heard a testimony that a union member does not have to pay if they so choose for non-collective or non uh, uh, collective bargaining issues. That's not true. The Beck decision says non-members do not have to. In the case of CWA, they make it quite difficult for those people. First, you have to since they didn't tell you you have a right not to be a member, you're automatically a member. You cannot withdraw from the union without paying continuous for the remainder of the contract year. And then it becomes effective for you. Then, is, and only then, can you then apply for the exemption of not having to pay for political activities. So it's not very well noted. And you, don't, you can only do that during a 14-day period on the anniversary of each contract. So I have four people telling lies. Uh, I have documentations. I'll give you all of them. They're all from either the Federal Election Commissions. Uh, there is a uh, another item I'd like to... Please, uh, please wrap this up in the next minute or two, okay. sir. I've got another witness yet. Okay. 28% uh, 20, 20 of the union members are Republicans, and yet their dues are going to, guess what? $400 million during his last presidential campaign that they can track or, or are admitted to went to <coughs> Democratic causes. Over 90% of that money went that way. I thought being fair was a good thing. When you talk about fairness, it's pay to play. Seniority is a negotiated <laughs> contract. A person, because of lack of seniority, I was fired twice, or not laid off twice, because I didn't have seniority. Not because of any bona fide occupational qualification, merely because of union contract. I walked Pickett when the CWA got their first uh, agency shop. That's why we were on strike. I spent two weeks off later, a few years later. 
So don't tell me about fairness. And if you want to know about health and safety issues, I've seen union. I'm, I'm sorry, sir, I'm going to have to cut you off. Thank you very much. Mr. Todd. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name is Philip Todd. I'm a resident of the 49th District. I'm a masonry contractor by trade. I've been a member of two unions, uh, Brotherhood of Maintenance Way, local employee, local 1911 out of Chillicothe, Missouri. That was back in the late 70s. And uh, the bricklayers and allied craft workers, local 15, mega local 15, I should say, Missouri, Kansas, uh, which used to be local 11. Jefferson City, but I want to go earlier in my life. I was raised in a union household. My father was a teamster, but it wasn't by choice. My dad was a milkman. He had a retail delivery. He owned his own truck, owned his own warehouse. He just was under contract to buy his product from, from a dairy. The union had been trying to get him to sign up, and he didn't want to sign up because there was absolutely no reason why he felt like he needed a union because he was an independent businessman. Well, the union pulled up one day and put one picket on the driveway at his refrigerated warehouse and prevented that truck from unloading that product there until he signed a contract with the union and signed up with the union. At that point, that put his family at risk. I was very, I was young. I was probably about five or six years old whenever that happened. But you cannot believe the anger that I felt from my father whenever he came home and said that he had, he was forced to do that because he didn't have any choice or he would have been put out of business because the Teamsters blocked his driveway and he didn't have access to his product. He was a member of the Teamsters for roughly about 20 years. He sold that business. He went on to a courier corporation. He met, uh, Ron mentioned about the withdrawal card thing. That particular company was resold to a company out of Kansas that didn't honor a union contract. He was never told about a withdrawal card. He lost an awful lot of his pension. He lost probably about 80% of his pension, as a matter of fact, because of what happened in that case. Now I'll go a little bit more to my current, to the current, uh, like I said, I was a member of the railroad union and that was the only job that was available in North Missouri at that particular time and I just was very, very lucky to even get in on that job. I just happened to run into the right person at the right time. And I worked for them for five years. I never saw anybody that was a business agent, never had any representation. It was just kind of a joke that, yeah, there's a union out there somewhere, but we really didn't know where they were at or anything. We just paid our dues. I joined the Bricklayers Union later on, the late 90s. And uh, one of the things that disturbed me about the Bricklayers Union, you talk about the separation of political activity, was that whenever I would go into the union hall around election time, there was always signs for certain candidates and you could pretty much go right down the line and figure out which candidates it was going to be. And most of those candidates were not people that I would personally support because they did not support causes that I believed in. And where's that fine line at? I'd like to know if that's an awful fine line right there between the political action side of the union and the actually passing out signs from the union hall and passing out bumper stickers and things like that. Another problem that I had was whenever I started complaining about, aren't you guys going to ask us about this before you just automatically start supporting a certain candidate? I mean, where, where, where's our input in this? Where is this decision being made at? It's obviously not coming from the rank and file. I don't remember anybody being asked. Any, any of my buddies, my brothers in the wall were being asked about who their uh, political preference was in a particular election. And I know darn near half of them probably agreed with me, but they were afraid to say anything because of being reprimanded, which I was reprimanded. I was blacklisted. The last year that I was a member of the union was 2008. I had 80 hours. It was all I had time. There were other, there were projects going on, but my name never seemed to come up on that list. Another thing that I 
believe that we should. I hate to interrupt you, sir, but we are just out of time. I understand. Thank you very much. I wholeheartedly appreciate everyone's patience today. I uh, can't tell you how much I appreciate the, the quiet, the way that we've been able to conduct this hearing. And uh, with that, the hearing's adjourned. <laughs>